Hi, everyone. Uh, you'll have to excuse me. It's a, a bit awkward to be in a room with people uh, after all this time. Uh, but uh, in a way, it's sort of like how work is for me every day. Uh, lots of people from various industries with uh, varying needs and expectations all trying to squeeze out uh, some data and insights from, uh, from me. And wouldn't you know, that's sort of the, uh, the topic for my session today, uh, sharing insights in a complex ecosystem. Uh, I'm Robin Yelte. I'm head of data and analytics at uh, Swish. Uh, and more specifically today, I will be going over some of the challenges uh, we have been facing with uh, uh, sharing insights in a scalable way uh, in the Swish ecosystem, as we like to call it. Um, and I'll be sharing some of the successful, as well as the not very uh, successful strategies that we have employed. Well, I think most of you are familiar uh, with uh, the, uh, the Swish app. Odds are, if you're a resident of Sweden or if you've been uh, in Sweden, you've uh, come in contact with Swish or um, most likely even used the app. And I've got the numbers to prove it. Uh, in fact, uh, about 97% of 18 to 55-year-olds uh, use Swish in Sweden. So that's, uh, this, this charts get uh, updated pretty much every day. Uh, we uh, now have, uh, uh, let's see here, yeah, and this is where it all started. Uh, Ten years ago, as a drawing on a whiteboard. And already here, in the very first sketch, you can uh, almost see that it was clear that some poor analyst ten years down the road would be responsible for uh, managing and, uh, and distributing and coordinating insights in this ecosystem between payments flowing from these little boxes by the hub in the middle. Um, a bit more bragging. 7.8 million users, 75% would recommend using Swish. That makes us the most recommended brand in Sweden. We uh, handle about 2.2 million payments every day, which means a bit over 1 billion kroner. About half of that is to businesses and half peer-to-peer. -peer. We have about 300,000, 280,000 uh, merchants using Swish to accept payments. The whiteboard you saw, nowadays, uh, this is the way we draw it. On the left-hand side, we've got all the crucial technical and development partners that we work with in order get, to get everything to work properly. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have all the more business-oriented relations, the, uh, the, the merchants, the businesses using Swish. And in the right-hand corner there, we have our... Uh, uh, perhaps most important relations, uh, the closest relationships we have uh, with the participating banks. So that's 13 of Sweden's most uh, uh, important banks using uh, Swish. And that's all well and good, but how do we keep all these uh, moving parts in sync when it comes to insights in, in the Swish? And uh, how do we keep everyone on top of what's going on? Well, I guess that's uh, where I enter the, the, the building. I joined Swish a little over two years ago. By that time, we were uh, a super small, we're still a small company, but we were even fewer. So everyone there uh, pretty much were part of the initial team, uh, the whiteboard guys. So we had uh, 10 to 15 people who had built the Swish system from the ground up. So they knew everything, and the few things they didn't knew, know, they had ex excellent intuitions around how they would work, so if they needed something, they would just... Odds were they either had direct access to the production databases, or they knew a developer that had access to the databases, so they could just answer their questions. And that's great, but uh, it really doesn't scale. Uh, and as we have grown from sort of a one-trick app, peer-to-peer -peer transactions, to a proper payment method uh, with, m uh, as I showed you, uh, so many moving parts, it's extremely important that we can uh, 
convey the information to the right parties. So my mission as head of data and analytics at Swish is to uh, provide DOPA to the uh, Swish ecosystem. It's, of course, an acronym. and. Uh, stands for democratizing, optimizing, personalizing, and automating. And I just, just say, in this context, personalization is not so much uh, personalization of the end user experience of the app, even if that's something that obviously can be done very well with data, but this is more personalizing within this ecosystem, who should get what, in, in what form, how we funnel the data there. And of course, as you all know, DOPA is a precursor to dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter that uh, uh, the nervous system uses to uh, send messages between nerve cells. And it's a big part of how we think and plan, and uh, most famously, maybe how we feel pleasure. I just thought that was really fitting. So the mission then is clear. Uh, I suppose just do this. But what does that mean then? Uh, not everyone in the ecosystem has the same priorities. They're not starting from the same vantage point. Uh, they're on different technical platforms. Democratize, yeah, but who should get what, basically? So I see this as a, as a journey into unmapped territory. And I'm a bit of a gamer, so um, I see it like a procedurally generated dungeon crawler uh, that has uh, Certain building blocks, traps, enemies, repeating elements, and we need strategies to deal with them uh, as they come up. And the way I evaluate these strategies basically boils, boils down to uh, one main criterion, and that's scalability. If we solve a challenge in a way that uh, scales with our current growth path and ex our expected growth, that's good and something that we can generally cope with, even if it turns up uh, from a new partner or uh, grows in scale at some, of, uh, at some party. If we solve something, which we have to do sometimes with a non-scalable strategy, uh, that's just a patch on a system that's destined to fail somewhere down the road. So that's going to mean uh, headache, headaches for us it won't be sustainable. Yeah, so I'm going to share some of the strategies for the most common challenges, uh, but I'll again be honest and say that we are not uh, uh, done at all here. We haven't reached the goal fully, and we still fall into a lot of traps then. So using the dungeon crawler metaphor, uh, you'll have to bear with me because I've been through so many sports and golf theme presentations that I'd, I thought this time I could use this one. Uh, we, uh, it seems like we have our first challenge ahead. And wouldn't you know, it's the Tower of Babel. I mean, in the payment space, definitions are crucial. Uh, let's take the extremely common case and easy to understand case of a person paying a merchant. That's simple, right? Yeah, well, a uh, person isn't the same as an account. It's not the same as the bank, it's not the same as the bank's app, it's not the Swish app, and it's not some IP somewhere. Uh, and a payment, of course, isn't the, the thing that's being bought, and it isn't the receipt. And the merchant, it's not an account, it's not a bank. So these are all crucial concepts overlapping to various degrees that are interpreted slightly different between all the parties in the, uh, in the ecosystem. So, um, let's not even mention how to define more high-level concepts like e-commerce versus physical shopping and point-of-sale systems. Those all have... I mean, I used to know what these things were before I started my job, and now I don't know anything anymore. I, you can just confuse me. Uh, but the strategy here, then, in order to keep everyone sane, is uh, that any member of the ecosystem is, of course, free to make any definitions they like within their systems, but we at Swish retain the right to serve as the official judge of any metrics and define uh, how metrics are defined, and with very few exceptions, we only serve those metrics. That scales, and so far we haven't turned into any major uh, failures with that, using that strategy. So that, that works pretty well. 
Moving on then to the next challenge. <laughs> and here we have a bunch of monsters then. And the first one is the Cyclops of Focus. Uh, focus on shipping in time, delivering uh, according to schedules, and uh, that sort of comes, often comes at odds with, with uh, uh, building something that's possible to analyze. And it speaks sort of with the voice of reason, the cycles, and we just want to get on with it. We'll solve that later. We can't think of synergies every time. Uh, there's a deadline and everything. And what's this then? Yeah, it's the Hydra of Silos that combines force with the, with the Cyclops. Uh, and uh, I mean, basically, everyone builds their own silo. And in an ecosystem like this, that becomes untenable then also. So our strategy here is to require any data flows to be considered early on in the planning stages. Every non-trivial initiative needs to allot time in order to ensure that anything that we produce can be analyzed and related to other metrics. That's sort of a must requirement, and it's an easy principle to establish, but it's pretty hard, as you all know, to follow in practice. So the price here for this strategy is pretty substantial. Um, it's perceived development slowdown, resources committed to developing and managing uh, data flows. But again, it's an important strategy, and it's the only one that scales. OK, moving on then. We're at the bridge to safety. Um, with our commonly understood, uh, up-to-date insights, we're not just now ready to deliver them to the members of the ecosystem, of course. But how then? Integrations are super hard. Uh, some parts of the ecosystem needs to have real-time access to, to the data in order to build functionality on top of it. They, uh, uh, they really need that flow of data. Other parts of the ecosystem, maybe other departments within the same parties, need the exact same stru uh, structure that they've always gotten, and uh, they have ancient systems and processes that require data to be formatted in the exact same way. Then. Okay, so our strategy here then, uh, somewhat, sometimes not the fun strategy of, of um, uh, maintaining the lines of communication at all costs, which means that we really need to cater to the least common denominator then. And that in practice means that we, it's really hard for us to turn off uh, email and, and file uh, delivery flows. So that's really important that everything works. And the price here is obvious of this strategy. Uh, we uh, cannot squeeze in as much data as we like in all the flows. Uh, there are vol uh, security issues, so we can't put uh, extremely sensitive data in, uh, in, in, in these, all of these flows. And this works pretty well for building reports and standard reports and stuff, stuff like that. But of course, everyone wants self-serve BI dashboards, real-time APIs, integrations. And we can do those things between, I mean, select parties, custom-built stuff, but uh, scaling this to the entire ecosystem currently is a super hard nut to crack. So that's uh, one of the suboptimal lands that I'm, I'm stuck in then. OK. Continuing on then, we're at the Isle of Incentives. We have the insights. Everyone agrees sort of what everything means. We have sort of established channels on how to transfer information. But now one part of the ecosystem needs some other part of the ecosystem to do something uh, in order to, uh, to uh, uh, do th stuff at their end. And that other party doesn't see the exact same benefits and is not motivated in to the same degree to change how they work. So in order to uh, connect all these islands, proper incentives are required. And the strategy we employ here is to try to relieve the unincentivized parties of as much development as possible. So we, being in the middle, usually can be uh, more cost efficient, more nimble, and have better access to the stuff that's needed than uh, uh, someone out in the spokes. But 
um, so we try to sort of bolster and, 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 and enable stuff like that. But again, there's a limit to how much that scales. Uh, and mostly in the sense that uh, we have marginal costs there that might be hard to sort of distribute uh, in, over the ecosystem in a, in a fair way. But that's usually how, how we cope, cope with it then. Okay, so great, we've built something nice together uh, and we can smell the rewards. And here we are, the treasure. Uh, now we just need to share this, uh, this uh, treasure then, but who should get what? As an example then, when a person sends a Swish to a certain of a certain value to another person in another bank, uh, Swish being in the middle, we see this entire picture. Uh, we have all the data, but we obviously cannot convey any more information to, uh, to a party than they're allowed to have. Uh, but we also want to enrich the data as much as possible in order to create even more valuable insights than so. This is a picture of course, very high level, but uh, that no one is allowed to have within the ecosystem. A specific bank, for example, might just be able to see uh, uh, their side, and uh, some other member of the ecosystem maybe needs to trigger on some specific aspect of a transaction but cannot see anything uh, involving uh, the parties. At Swish, internally, we usually, um, when we uh, make statistics and analytics, we only work with aggregated data, anonymized, of course. So uh, we need to remove even more detail. And, um, but again, for billing purposes, we might need to, to see more complex uh, uh, and more detailed information, but scaling, uh, removing other sensitive data. Then, so. And most of the time, no one's allowed to see anything. So the strategy here, Unfortunately, uh, it's a very defensive strategy. We always err on the side of caution. We, uh, uh, we, we remove us to the bone until there's nothing left that's very risky then. So um, this has, a, of course, a very high cost, both in direct sense, where we have Byzantine rules and systems managing the data security and everything, but also, of course, leaving a lot of insight on the table. So this is one of the, uh, the uh, uh, strategies that I'm hoping to, to, to evolve into something more, more, uh, more uh, fruitful. But again, it, it scales, and uh, unfortunately, the opposite strategy doesn't scale at all. Playing fast and loose doesn't work. So we're done, right? Well, there seems to be one more uh, room on this journey then. It's, uh, it's the wipe, it's the dungeon reset. So, what we've faced so far has been uh, pretty predictable challenges. It's been uh, any part of the ecosystem that can change in some predictable way. But generally, that's not uh, entirely the case. Not everything scales like this. So we might have some fundamental changes to what we do. For example, moving some parts into the cloud or entering new markets. And uh, these fundamental shifts might alter and change the map entirely we might find ourselves in an even more complex world with uh, new challenges, traps, and enemies. Um, and we can't plan for everything, but I still think that most of the strategies that I've shown so far are applicable even after the map is completely redrawn. So at the end of the day, after two years, and what have I accomplished? Uh, I think technology-wise, technology uh, I'm going to learn a lot here the, during these days. I'm sure there are plenty of good systems that, that can help on the way uh, here. Results-wise, I think we've grown a lot. We provide much more insight to the entire ecosystem right now. Uh, and uh, most importantly, as an organization, we have really learned. Uh, so we are much more able to meet uh, the continuing challenge uh, of, of a transforming world. Thanks.